This sermon is titled The Power of the Blood of Jesus. Be enriched as you listen. This morning we're going to take some time to meditate, just reflect on the power of the blood of Jesus. The power of the blood of Jesus. You know, nowadays, especially in the contemporary church, talking about the blood and the cross and all of those things are not very fashionable. You got to, you know, try to avoid those themes. But that's very core to our Christian faith. It's very core. And so we need to be loud, bold, strong, and proud about the blood. Talk about it. But of course, in order to do that, we need to understand the significance, understand why the blood. Now, of course, the the Bible has a lot to say about the blood, about the blood of Jesus. And this morning, we're going to focus in on only a few things about the blood. I want us to focus in on why. The blood. Why did it have to be this way? You know, so gross. Blood. Well, I mean, could it not have happened something without being so gory? Why the blood? What's the point? And it doesn't appeal necessarily to the modern generation. Blood. So you and I need to be very clear. Why? The blood. And the second part that we're going to deal with this morning is, what is the significance of the blood of Jesus Christ? Why could not the blood of birds and animals suffice? Because after all, they did a lot of that in the Old Testament. God told his people to do it. You know, bring a pigeon, a dow, or this or that. I mean, he told them, and then he said, but it's not enough. So what's the point? Why tell them to do it in the first place? If you know it's not going to suffice. So what's the point? And then... We will highlight, not necessarily explore in detail, but highlight the power of the blood of Jesus and and what you and I need to do to walk experientially in the power of the blood of Jesus. So that's about the ground that we want to cover this morning. Back in the garden, when Adam and Eve sinned, They disobeyed God. They did something God told them not to do. Suddenly, there was a consciousness of their nakedness. But perhaps that was only a reflection of something greater. A consciousness of a deeper issue of sin, of being unfit and being unworthy to see God face to face, the very one who created them, with whom they enjoyed such intimate fellowship that the Bible says God would walk with them in the garden in the cool of the evening. And sin had disrupted that. The Bible tells us that Adam and Eve, they they made themselves a covering of fig leaves. Try to cover themselves. And God did something strange. The Bible tells us that God brought coats of skin. For Adam and Eve. See, wear this. And why did God do that? 
Was it just, you know, okay, leaves will wear out. Here's something more durable, leather. I hear something more warm for you. Or was God actually pointing to something else? So imagine this in your mind, that when Adam and Eve sinned, they did something God told them not to do. Sin and the consciousness of sin and guilt and shame gripped their once innocent minds. They try to cover themselves. I need something. And Almighty God Himself, now the Bible doesn't tell us this, but we can infer that Almighty God Himself went and killed perhaps two animals. He skinned them, dried the skins. Now this process probably, and I don't know, we don't know, probably took 24 hours if, if it was a natural process, at least. And he brought that and he said, wear this. These coats of skin didn't necessarily take sin away, but it served two purposes. It was a temporary covering for their sin. And it was also a suggestion, a pointer, a figurative expression saying, you need something more than your fig leaves. You need something of blood. To deal with sin. So why the blood? What's the significance? What's the importance of the blood? The Bible tells us. In Romans 6.23. The wages of sin. Is death. The result of sin. The outcome. The penalty. The consequence. Of sin is death. And in the Bible, death is threefold. There is spiritual death, which is separation from a relationship with God, which Adam and Eve experienced the moment they sinned. Spiritual death. It's also physical death. Which means this body is separated from this world. And thirdly, it is also eternal death, which is a separation from the presence of God, from the dwelling place of God in a place called hell that was not designed for you and me. It is not formed for you and me. So death in the Bible is threefold. There is the spiritual death, the physical death, and the eternal death. That's the penalty for sin. For one sin. This is it. And the Bible also says, and this is in the 14th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, not everything, I'm, not all the scriptures will come on the screen, uh, but... It's, it's based on scripture. Ezekiel 14. The Bible says, God says, The soul that sins will die. The soul that sins will die. Which means every person is answerable, is accountable, is responsible to God for your own sin. The soul that sins will die. The psalmist understood in Psalm 49, the psalmist said, What can I do to ransom or redeem my brother? Meaning, I can't do anything to help my brother. Why? 
I've got sin of my own to deal with. I can't die in his place. And he also said, you can't buy redemption with money. You can't pay for this. You can't pay for this with money. So, why the blood? In the Old Testament, God revealed this. In Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, he said, I have given you the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given you the blood to make atonement for your soul. So why is the blood important? The life of the creature is in the blood. So when blood is shed, it's indicating that death has occurred. And that blood is providing a covering for sin. So the understanding is, here is an animal or a bird or a sacrifice. Your sins are now being placed on it. And that is sacrifice, is killed, blood shed. And that blood, signifies that death has occurred. The wages of sin is death. Death has occurred. And your sin is covered. And so, the blood of these sacrifices were being offered by people in the Old Testament. As an atonement, as a covering for their sin. Because it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 9 verse 22, it says, Without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. Meaning there is no other way. There is no other way. By which sin can be forgiven. This is the only way. Blood has to be shed. To indicate that death has occurred. And that's the only way that sin can be forgiven. Which means that no amount of my penance. No amount of my piety. No amount of my pilgrimage. None of that. Is going to help deal with sin. There's only one way. Blood has to be shed. A life has to be given. Death has to occur because the result of sin is death. When the psalmist prayed, in, when David prayed in Psalm 51 verses 2 and 7, he prayed. He said, you know, when he sinned, he cried out for a cleansing. And he actually mentions the cleansing of the blood. He says, wash me from my sin. Cleanse me from my sin. Purge me with hyssop. He's referring to that plant that was used to dip in the blood and apply the blood. So he says, wash me with the blood. He's crying out for a cleansing with the blood so that his sin could be removed. And I want to add another dimension here about the sacrifice of the firstborn which is also very significant the firstborn in the bible represents the dignity the honor the strength of the individual so the firstborn is very significant in the bible And there are numerous examples of this. When Abel came and offered his offering before God, he brought the firstborn of his flock. 
sheep and goat. He brought the firstborn and he offered it to God. Very significant. In the Bible, the firstborn is consecrated, is dedicated to God. The first fruits, the firstborn. It's indicative that this is the beginning. This is the expression of the strength, the honor, the dignity, the increase of that person. The firstborn. And so the sacrifice of the firstborn is the highest form of sacrifice in the Bible. Now there's a perversion of this that you find in the Bible. When people were worshipping false gods, they also engaged in similar things. Sacrificing. And they went to the extent of sacrificing their own firstborn children. And, and God abhorred that. Said, I'm not asking you to do that. They put them in the fire and so on. But it was a perversion of a spiritual truth. Of blood and the firstborn. The blood of the firstborn. But here is a problem. Why could not the blood of birds and animals suffice? Why? Think with me. First of all, the law of God required that the soul that sins will die. Birds and animals were not sufficient, were an imperfect substitute for the following reasons. First of all, they were not of the same nature and class as human beings. You and I were created in the image of God. The only creation, the Bible says, in the image of God. Birds and animals couldn't take that place. Secondly, why was the blood of birds and animals insufficient? Secondly, because birds and animals were not free moral beings. They were not exercising free will. And so they were neither sinful nor sinless. And so they were inadequate to take our place. Why was the blood of birds and animals insufficient? Third reason. Because they were not voluntarily of their own free will, of their own choice, willingly, intentionally stepping in to be our substitutes. It was not an act of their will. They had no choice. Why was the blood of birds and animals insufficient? Fourth reason. Probably the most important reason. The wages of sin is death. Spiritual death, physical death, eternal death. At very best... The sacrifice, the blood of birds and animals could only meet one of these requirements, which is physical death. They were not stepping into spiritual death in any way. Neither were they experiencing death in hell, a place in hell in any way. And so... The blood of these birds and animals were insufficient. The Bible tells us very clearly in Hebrews 10 verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Not possible. At best, they served as a temporary covering. A 
temporary solution, a temporary appeasement of impending judgment. And they served to remind us that a greater sacrifice or a greater thing is required here to deal with your sin. Like the culture skins that God gave Adam and Eve, it covered them, but underneath that covering, there was still sin. There was still a consciousness of sin. And the person under the coat of skin still owed a penalty. They were covered, but it was temporary. Are you with me so far? And this is where we understand that there was a predicament that our sins needed to be dealt with. But here's the problem. Our debt that we owed before God also put us in a very vulnerable position because our sins separated us from God our sins disconnected us from God and now the enemy the devil came and took over our sin became the means by which Satan controlled us and we became subordinate Subject to the devil. So there's a twofold problem now. We've got a debt before God, our sins that needed to be dealt with. And because of that debt, because of that sin, we are now not only subject to sin, but we are subject to Satan. And then, of course, that impending penalty of death. And that's the predicament of every human person, of every individual. So what's the solution? The blood of birds and animals was insufficient. And the only way a solution could be provided was if there was one more human being, one human being, whose blood was sinless, whose blood who carried innocent, pure blood. This person had to be of the same class as man. This person had to exercise free moral agency. He had to face sin as you and I face it and yet be sinless. This person had to, on his own voluntary intent, step in and say, I will be their substitute. And this person had to shed his blood. He had to die. And he had to experience death in all three aspects. Spiritual death, physical death, and eternal death. Go to hell. And that would be the only way. That person's blood, when offered up before God, would be the only way that our sins could be atoned or be cleansed. Fully dealt with. And there was only one way that's what, that this would ever be possible. For God to do this himself. And this is why the blood of the sinless, perfect Son of God is the only blood that can cleanse. 
2,000 years ago, as God had always intended and planned. The eternal word laid aside his powers of deity, of omnipresence, omniscience, and omnipotence. And deity stepped in to feeble humanity, wrapped himself with humanity. And he became like one of us, walked as a man. And he submitted himself, he subjected himself to be tempted in all points like as we are. And using free moral agency, he chose not to sin and to be sinless. And his was the only blood that was not tainted by sin. For the rest of us, we were born in sin. The Bible says that Jesus was in all points tempted, like as we are. And he is the only one, 1 John 3, 5, the only one without sin. And this son of God, the Bible says, was the only begotten of the father. And he was the firstborn of the father whom angels worship. Only begotten. Firstborn. Not in the sense that he had a beginning, he never had a beginning, but in his humanity. He is the only begotten, and he is the firstborn. There could be no higher sacrifice than this. And this son of God, of his own choosing, of his own voluntary, willing intent, went to the cross. Where he would offer his body and shed his blood. And he experienced death in all three aspects. Our sins were put upon him so that on the cross he was separated from the Father. Never in eternity past, nor will it ever happen in eternity future. But at that moment on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he suffered physical death. His body was taken down from the tree and put into Joseph's tomb and borrowed tomb. The Roman soldiers verified his death. They certified his death by piercing him on the side. And that day, he went down to hell. Hades, hell. In all three aspects, the Son of God died. And then the Bible says this, that he, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, it says, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. I can just imagine this. That Jesus, after he rose up from the grave, Mary was about to touch him. He said, don't touch me. I've got one more stop to make. I've got to carry my blood. You don't ask me who collected the blood. That's not the issue. The issue is Hebrews 9, 12. And try to imagine this with me. In the grand stands of heaven, in the glory 
of the spiritual realm. But God the Father is seated and the angels are watching what is happening. They saw the eternal word become a man. They saw him crucified. They saw his blood shed. And here on this morning, he is walking into the heavenly tabernacle, carrying his own blood to offer it before the altar of God in heaven. And that blood was not the blood of bulls and goats. That was not the blood of some bird, some animal. It was the blood of God who had clothed himself with flesh and blood, with humanity. It was the blood of the sinless, spotless Son of God. It was the blood of the only only begotten, the firstborn of the Father. It was the blood of the one who had triumphed over sin, over Satan, over death. It was the blood of the only sacrifice that could prevail. And he took this blood and he walked into the heavenly tabernacle. And he placed it on the mercy seat before God. And that moment, eternal redemption was offered to you and me. This blood doesn't just cover sin. This blood cleanses sin. This blood doesn't leave you in a state of sin consciousness. This blood gives you the righteousness of God. This blood doesn't leave you in subjection to sin, Satan, and death. This blood redeems you and brings you out of the power of sin, out of the power of Satan, out of the power of death, and makes you a son and a daughter of God. This is the blood. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your hands together. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. This blood sealed our complete redemption. The Bible tells us, 1 Peter 1 18 and 19, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, because they cannot buy your redemption in any way. But you were purchased, you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. This blood obtained our redemption. This blood. This is the power of the blood of Jesus. That is why today you and I We don't come to God with the blood of birds and animals. We don't come to God with our money. We don't come to God with our piety. We don't come to God with our pilgrimages. We come to God to the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. That's the only way. The power, understand the power of the blood of Jesus. It's because of the blood of Jesus, our debt debt of sin has been wiped away. It's because of the blood of Jesus, the power of sin has been broken. It's because of the blood of Jesus, Satan no longer has any rights over us. It's because of the blood of Jesus that we are redeemed unto God. We belong to God. It is because of the blood of Jesus that we are in a covenant relationship with God. It's because of the blood of Jesus that we overcome. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Worship team, please come. So today, you and I, we testify to the blood. What does that mean? Revelation 12 verse 11 says, 
talking about these people at, at, at a particular point in time. He says, they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb. There is overcoming power in this blood which the blood of birds and animals could not afford. But in this blood, you and I overcome. The devil's afraid of this blood. The devil lies crushed underneath our feet because of the blood. The blood of Jesus. Now we don't plead the blood. You know, there used to be this old saying, plead the blood. We don't plead the blood. Why? Because what is it to plead the blood? It's a term borrowed from the legal system where a lawyer would plead a case for be on, on behalf of the person being accused. He would plead their case by presenting evidence in order to receive their pardon we don't plead the blood why because the case was dealt with 2000 years ago the case is over the verdict has been pronounced satan is condemned you are justified the matter is closed there is no case court proceedings against you so we don't plead the blood we proclaim the blood we just say what the blood has done for us. The case is over. I'm not pleading for anything. Devil, I'm telling you, you've lost the case. I'm telling you that I overcome by the blood of the Lamb. I'm not pleading anything but the devil. I'm saying, devil, the blood has cleansed me. Look at me. I'm telling devil, the blood's redeemed me. You can't touch me. I'm proclaiming, you and I, we are proclaiming the blood. We are proclaiming what the blood of the Son of the living God has done for us. And every time we testify to that blood, every time we proclaim the blood, every time we announce what the blood of Jesus has done for us, the Bible says we overcome. We overcome. Amen. There's only one way to have our sins forgiven before God. There's only one way for us to come into a right relationship with God. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what this day is a remembrance of. The blood that was shed. So the question is, have you been washed in the blood? Have you been to that cleansing flow? Have you personally experienced the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus? Because there is nothing else that can wash away our sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So this very moment, if there are people inside this auditorium, if there are people who are watching us online, and you as an individual, it's not about your neighbor, it's not about your mom and dad and uncle and aunt, it's about you. Have you been washed in the blood? Or are you just wearing fig leaves? Some form of piety, some religious thing? Are you trying to cover it with something else? 
I want you to know that God Almighty has made provision for all of us to be washed in the blood. If you personally, you've never asked the Lord Jesus, saying, Jesus, I now understand why you died on that cross. I now understand what that cross is all about. That seemingly bloody, gory, gross-looking thing that happened. I understand why that blood had to be shed. And God, I want that blood on me. I want that blood to wash my sins away. I want to receive the cleansing of the blood of Jesus. If you're here this morning, even if there's one person here this morning, and maybe you backslid, maybe you once loved Jesus, but you, you know, you just wandered away, but you feel this morning, I need to get back to my Jesus. I want to lead us in a simple prayer. We'll remain seated for a few moments. I want to lead us in a simple prayer. Even if there's one person here and this morning you feel in your heart, I need to ask Jesus to cleanse me with his blood. I need it. I've never done it before in my life. And it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what your upbringing is. It doesn't matter what your religious beliefs are. Today, you've heard about the cross. And today, you have the free choice to decide you're coming under the blood of Jesus. And you're going to follow Jesus Christ and you alone. And no man and no devil can stop you from doing it. It's your choice. You can make that decision. I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. And if you've never done this before in your life, where you've come to Jesus and said, Jesus, I believe in you. I now understand why you died for me on the cross. And I'm asking you to wash me with your blood. Make me a child of God. I want that. If you want to do that, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And I invite you to pray with me. Let's bow our heads, please. If you've never done this before, and there could be people watching us online, if you've never done this before and this morning you want to do this I want to lead you in this prayer and you can pray with me Lord Jesus I come to you I understand why you died on the cross I believe you rose up from the dead and you're alive today. I ask you to forgive my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. I receive you as my Lord, as my Savior. And I choose to follow you and you alone the rest of my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me for the very first time, right where you are seated, and this is not to embarrass you, but it's to rejoice with you, to celebrate with you. The Bible says there is great rejoicing in heaven, even over one person who comes to the Lord. And we want to give you a free gift, a bag that has some resources that you can take back with you for you to read and learn more about Jesus. So if you pray this prayer with me for the very first time, we want to celebrate with you. So would you just wave your hand at me, please? In this auditorium, if there's anyone here, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. Could you wave your hand at me? I just want to see it. Anyone here? You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. Anyone? Just wave it so I can see it. Maybe there's one hand right way at the back. God bless you. Anyone else? You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. Just wave it at me. Just wave it at me. Anyone else here? You prayed with me for the very first time. Very first time. Okay, let's just, just look around. We don't want to miss anybody. Amen. Amen. Praise God. 
even for one person who prayed that prayer. We praise God. We thank God for that. So church, the Bible says that we are a people who've been purchased by the blood. That we are a people, we are called the church of the firstborn. The Bible. The Bible calls us the church of the firstborn. Our identity comes through this Jesus who shed his blood for us. So I want to encourage you and me, let us proclaim boldly what the blood of Jesus has done for us. Let's sing about it. Let's celebrate the power of that blood. Let's walk in the power of the blood. Be a little proud about the blood. It's okay. He did it. He did it for you and me. Let the devil know as often as you can what the blood of Jesus has done for you. He doesn't like to hear it. But you just tell him, devil, I know you don't like to hear it. Listen one more time. What the blood has done for me. Let's rise to our feet as the worship team leads us. We're going to sing about the blood. Free from the burden of sin. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you or evil or victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Sing it out. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. And pride, there's power in the blood. Oh, yeah, there's power in the blood. So come for the cleansing to Calvary's fire. There's wonderful power in the blood. We shouted, we sing, yeah, there's power, there's power, a wonder working power in the blood. Oh, yes, there is. In the precious blood of the Lamb Would you be much whiter than snow There's power in the blood There's power in the blood Since things start There's life giving flow Cause there's wonderful power in the blood Oh there is power, there is power
living power that are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? And are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, and are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? And are you God? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? And are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed and are you washed? Oh yes, oh yes, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. And are your garments spotless? Let's say this out loud and bold and strong together. Devil, Devil I, want you to know, I want you to know I'm washed in the blood. In the blood. I'm, redeemed I'm redeemed by the blood. By the blood. I'm a blood washed, I'm a blood, washed. Blood, bought. blood bought son or a daughter <laughs> of God. Let's try that again. I'm a blood bought. I'm a blood bought. Blood washed. Child of God. I'm an heir of God. I'm an heir of God. I'm redeemed by the blood. I'm redeemed by the blood. Everything about me. Everything about me is covered by the blood. Is covered by the blood. Devil, you can't touch me. Devil, you can't touch me. I'm redeemed by the blood. I'm redeemed by the blood. And I'm proud of it. Amen. Amen. The Bible says we were not redeemed by silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Be proud about the precious blood, the precious blood of Christ. We're washed, we're redeemed. We're God's property. Amen. 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 That's who we are. Sorry to say we have to close. <laughs> but go home and have a great day and be back tomorrow or Sunday, whatever works for you. And uh, you know, we're so grateful for all the people that God has placed in our, amongst us as a church, as a community. And they worked very hard over the last several months. Actually, it started way back from November. And uh, they put this production for us together. You're going to be able to see it tomorrow, Saturday, 6.30, and Sunday morning, 10.30. Bring as many people as you can. Right? Let's close. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit, be with each of us always. And may the blood of Jesus prevail in each of our lives. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.